So it's a great pleasure to be here at GIGAS Days to give an overview of the International Association of Geodesy. Um, much of what I'm going to say has already been presented in the first session, but I think I'll give a slightly different um, message um, about the IAG. So first, you know, we often are asked, what is geodesy? And the classical definition is that it's the science concerned with the shape, uh, rotation, and gravity of, of the Earth. But of course, geodesy is much, much more than that, um, right? It's, it's, it's that geoscience that treats the Earth as a complex dynamic system um, of a body consisting of many layers, you know, both internal to the solid Earth as well as the outer fluid layers. And um, in particular, you know, geodesy deals with observing uh, the dynamics of the solid Earth, how the surface uh, deforms in, in response to earthquakes, for example. It, uh, we observe the variations of the uh, liquid part of the Earth, the oceans, the um, atmosphere, the um, surface of ice sheets. We monitor, we observe variations in the Earth's rotation, trying to understand what's uh, causing those observed variations. We, of course, uh, monitor the atmosphere, the troposphere, the ionosphere, and um, temporal variations in the gravity field. Last but not least, we also are able to determine the positions of um, objects on the surface of the Earth or in space. And so um, our observations, one of the great applications of our observations is to position and navigation and even timing. So, um, so why, why is geodesy fundamental to society? And I think a lot of this has to do with the positioning and timing um, applications that we enable. So uh, we mentioned uh, before uh, the importance of geodesy to precision farming. Um, there's a great economic benefit if a farmer knows where he should, um, uh, uh, you know, what uh, portion of his field, what of his fields need stuff to be fertilized and what portions don't. He doesn't have to just fertilize everything. He can really target his fertilizer to the part of his field that, that really um, uh, needs it. So geodesy has many, many customers like this. Um, and, it, it, and most of these customers rely upon the reference frame, the terrestrial reference frame that that is probably our foremost product. And uh, these observations, you know, have, have uh, many um, applications, not only in farming, but in mining and construction. Uh, we also hear a lot about autonomous vehicles, uh, but we also, our observations are also uh, greatly useful to um, understanding and mitigating geohazards. Uh, um, from earthquakes to volcanoes to hurricanes. So there's, you know, there's much more to geodesy than just the science of understanding its uh, shape, rotation, and gravity field. There are numerous, many numerous applications to our observations. So the origins of the IAG. Um, when did all of this start? So it really started in 1862 when General Johann Jacob Bayer of Prussia um, established the Central European Arc Measurement Campaign. And this, uh, the goal of this was to determine anom anomalies in the Earth's curvature in Central Europe. Um, uh, uh, looking at the deflection of the vertical and the relative structure of the geoid. But it wasn't just a measurement campaign. Um, he also wanted to interpret those observed anomalies in terms of the structure and composition of the Earth. And so from the very beginning of, of, of what became the IAG, uh, not only was the, op the observations you know, a component of, of, of the forerunner of the IAG, but also the scientific interpretation of those observations. 
Um, the, in 1864, just two years later, there was a uh, first conference of the re representatives of the member states taking part in that Central European Art Management Campaign. This was held in Berlin and they created a structure, an organizational structure consisting of a permanent commission, a central bureau, and they agreed that, that um, these uh, general conferences of the representatives of the member states would um, continue to, they would meet, you know, on uh, every three years. And those general conferences, you can really consider to be the forerunners of the current IAG and IUGG general assemblies that we have today. So at the general conference in 1886, um, also held in Berlin, uh, they established the International Geodetic Association. The first president of that association was the director general of IGN Spain, right? Uh, general Carlos Ibanez. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Um, so it's a great pleasure to be here um, at the institute that um, our first IAG president worked at. Um, and uh, the International Geodetic Association was incorporated into the International Union of Geodesy and Geophysics when it was founded in 1919. And sometime later, the name was changed to the International Association of Geodesy when the IUGG decided to um, uh, have all the names of the as as constituent associations uh, uh, have a uniform structure, uniform naming convention. So uh, the IAG is a member of the um, uh, I, IUGG. As I said, there's eight associations um, that make up the IUGG, but the IAG is unique in a couple of respects, I think. Um, all of these associations have commissions and working groups to, you know, um, uh, where the business of the association is conducted. But what's, and, and some of the associations have services. So like EOPSO, the International Association of the Physical Sciences of the Oceans, has a uh, service, uh, permanent um, uh, service for the mean sea level. It's actually co-organized with, with the IAG. But uh, while some of the services have maybe one or, sorry, while some of the other associations have maybe one or two services, the IAG has 12 of them. Um, and, and, this, and, and the role of the services is to provide data and products, at least within the IAG. And um, the fact that there are so many services within um, the IAG speaks to the importance of, of our observations to the geodetic science. Um, and this goes all the way back to the founding of the IAG in 1862. The other unique and really unique aspect of uh, the IAG within the IUGG is the Global Geodetic Observing System. It is the only association that has its own observing system. Now there are other observing systems, you know, um, in the world like the Global Climate Observing System, but G but that observing system is part of the World Meteorological Organization, which is a specialized agency of the United Nations. So the IAG um, uh, hosting the Global Geodetic Observing System is unique, and I think it again reflects the importance that uh, geodetic observations have uh, to the geodetic science. They really go hand in hand, and, um, and you can trace that lineage all the way back to um, 1862 to the very foundations of the IAG. So this is the organizational structure of the IAG. Um, we have commissions, intercommission committees, that's, that's the scientific component of the IAG. We have the services which provide data and products. Um, we have the global um, geodetic observing system. I'll say a bit more of that about that at the end. Um, and then the governance structure consists of the IAG Council, which are consists of representatives of the member states of the IAG, and it determines the strategy um, that the IAG will follow. It elects the executive committee. Um, the executive committee then implements that strategy set by the council, and the bureau consists of the uh, president, vice president, and general secretary. 
Secretary General, <laughs> sorry, of the IAG. Uh, the IAG Council meets once every four years. The Executive Committee will meet two or three times a year, and the Bureau meets monthly. So the day-to-day -day activities of the IAG are really conducted by the Bureau. Um, okay, there we go. Um, so um, in a little more detail, um, the commissions then, there are four commissions. The first is on reference frames. Right, and it's to you know establish, maintain, and improve uh, geodetic reference frames on both global and regional basis. Do um, uh, research into how to improve the reference frames. For example, Commission Two is on gravity, and it's similar to Commission One, but it deals with the gravity field. So it, it determines, uh, interprets, analyzes global, regional um, uh, gravity fields. Um, 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 and does modeling of the gravitational field. Commission three is on Earth rotation and geodynamics. It's concerned with the uh, variations in the Earth's rotation, what's causing them, uh, the Earth tides, um, as well as the, the dynamics of the Earth system, solid Earth system primarily here, um, including um, uh, the effect of um, a glacial static adjustment, uh, for example, on, on, on the Earth system. And then the last uh, commission, Commission 4 on positioning and applications, um, is the largest commission in uh, the IAG. And there's been a suggestion um, made to the executive committee that it's really too large. Um, half of that commission is concerned with, um, with the atmospheric applications. Um, studying the atmosphere and the ionosphere with geodetic techniques. And so in the future, um, um, four years from now, that commission may very well be split into two commissions, one um, on positioning applications and a second on atmospheric um, applications of geodesy. So in addition to the commissions, we have intercommission committees and projects. So uh, the Intercommission Committee on Theory, uh, the objective is to advance geodetic theory. That Intercommission Committee has, has been in existence for, I don't know, probably 20 years or more. But more recently, two additional Intercommission Committees have been established. One on geodesy for climate research with the goal of advancing the use of geodetic observations to study climate. And the second uh, Intercommission Committee on Marine Geodesy um, with the objective of advancing the theory and applications of marine geodesy. These two commissions were established four years ago and they will continue uh, for the next four years. Uh, the IAG now has a, uh, one project, project on novel sensors and quantum technology for geodesy. And the goal here is to advance the use of quantum technology and novel measurement concepts for geodetic applications. And they're focusing on three different aspects of this. One you might call quantum gravimetry, where you're using atom interferometry for, to, to measure the Earth's gravity field either on ground or in space. A uh, second focus area is novel, what you might consider to be a novel technology, which is uh, laser interferometric ranging between test masses in space. In space. So there's a demonstration of, of doing this um, on the GRACE follow-on mission um, being operated right now. And finally, the third focus area is relativistic geodesy where you're doing frequency comparisons of optical clocks connected by optical um, links and 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 the objective here is to um, take advantage of the relativistic effects of clocks uh, ticking in in uh, um, in, in different geopotentials, they tick at a different rate, and so you, the clocks have gotten accurate enough that those frequency shifts can now be tested, and we can uh, use that to measure different, the differences in the height of those interconnected clocks. In addition, the um, uh, IAG just established a pilot project um, on um, to. Uh, to deter to establish an international altimetry service. 
So for a number of years, uh, the IAG has been working towards this goal. Um, it, has, it has advanced um, enough now that it's ready to become a pilot project. And so they are uh, currently uh, developing uh, their uh, organizational structure uh, to uh, turn this into a regular project um, and eventually a service of the um, IAG. Uh, finally, you know, we have the services. Okay, so we can classify the services as, you know, geometric. So these are the International GNSS Service, VOBI Service, DORIS, and um, Satellite Laser Ranging Service, um, along with uh, the International Refrigeration Reference System Service and the Permanent Service for Mean Sea Level. So geometric and general services, we also have gravity services, the International Gravity Field Service, the um, International Geodynamics and Earth Tide Service, there's um, even a, a digital, there's even a service on digital elevation models. So that we have 12 of these services right now and, and their goal is to uh, provide the data and products uh, that um, not only scientists but um, society uh, as a whole uh, rely upon these days. Finally, we have the Global Geodetic Observing System, right? And so uh, this is uh, the component of GIGOS that is meant to integrate all of the services into a coherent observing system of the Earth. And uh, the meeting today, this week, is, um, is to discuss, you know, how we're going to do this. So this is the new executive committee of the um, IAG. It, uh, these are the officers that just took up their positions um, a couple of months ago. Uh, so the executive committee consists of president, vice president, and secretary general. All of us are here at this meeting um, at GIGOS. In addition, it consists of the past president and past secretary general. Um, consists of the presidents of the commissions, presidents of the intercommission committees, um, the chair of the project on quantum geodesy, the president of GIGOS, who is here, of course, uh, the president of the communication and outreach grant, service representatives, and members at large. Um, Many of these uh, members of the executive committee are attending this meeting either um, in person or online. And um, I'm glad to see these, such a great interest um, in the um, activities of GIGOS. So my, my presentation is in a session that's all about recent activities. Um, so, so far I haven't been talking too much about recent activities. I've been giving a history of the IAG, but, but the recent activity, um, uh, the, 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 the one recent activity that I would like to highlight um, uh, stems from this executive committee. If you look at the members of that executive committee, you'll notice that, that three quarters of them are from Europe. Three are from the United States, and then there's one from Asia, one from South America. So the geographic balance of the executive committee isn't very great. Again, if you look at those members, they are, there's very few early career scientists on the executive committee. So the generational balance of, of the executive committee isn't very great. And um, the, as far as gender balance goes, well, I think if you count them, I think there's maybe, well, it's mostly male, right? It's, it's mostly older male members of the executive committee. So my very first act as the newly elected president of the IAG was to establish a task force on inclusion with the charge to recommend uh, ways and means that the IEG can become more inclusive to better balance the, uh, the gender, the geographic distribution, and the generational uh, balance of the IEG, not only of the executive committee, but of all aspects of the IEG, the commissions, the working groups, the services, um, and, I, and when I 
proposed this at the meeting in Berlin. I was very happy to see that that I asked for volunteers to serve on that task force and about six or seven, about a third of the members of the executive committee volunteered to serve on this, um, which is really um, heartening. It really shows the importance that, uh, that this new executive committee um, uh, uh, has for um, uh, continuing to grow the um, IAG um, um, in the future by making it better, more inclusive. Um, and I think that is my last slide. That is what I prepared for this presentation. So thank you very much.